Hi there. In this video, I'll go over chapter one of my book, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to the 555 Timer. I'll show you how to read a simple schematic and translate that into placing actual electronic components onto a breadboard. I have a 400 point solderless breadboard on my bench right now. Each one of these holes is called a tie point usually, and there happens to be 400 on this. There are many other sizes. Uh, this one is quite a bit bigger. They come a lot bigger than this even. Uh, they come smaller than this 400 point one. Um, but basically when it gives a number and then it says uh, points or tie points, um, they're referring to how many holes, for lack of a better term, are, are on this breadboard. Now, what this allows us to do is not do any soldering and do very rapid prototyping of circuits. If you're just curious, uh, if you put some parts together, if they're going to work, uh, there's very few ways to do it quicker than a solderless breadboard. Now then, how do we know which of these holes and rows are, are connected to each other? On this particular one, uh, just I know already that this row, this top row alongside the red line, these are all connected. Uh, the bottom row along the blue line is all connected. Same on this bottom section uh, that we'll call it, uh, or we'll call this the top and we'll call this the bottom. So same here, the red line's connected all together and this blue line, every point along this blue line is connected together. However, they are isolated from the ones at the top and all the ones in what's usually called the prototyping area are isolated from the top and the bottom. Sometimes these are called power rails, distribution rails, bus rails. There's, there's different terms for, for these longer horizontal uh, rows. Um, now these vertical columns, these are in rows of five. So here we have row one and row one uh, position A is connected to all of these through position E. Uh, however, you see there's a break along here. It's usually a notch or a trough uh, is what it's referred to or a trench. So this row one here is not connected to this row one here. So F through J are not connected to A through E. Now, how can we verify this? Uh, one of the ways is to use a multimeter. So if you have a multimeter and especially one uh, that goes to a continuity setting, which means when you touch the leads together, there's going to be a beep to let you know to together, you could use this. Now then, as you can see though, we can't really get into these holes. So how are we going to test which ones are connected together? Well, there's a couple different ways. Uh, first, what we can do is we can take just a little piece of wire like that. We can straighten that out. We can stick it in one of the holes. We can get a second piece of wire, straighten it out a little bit, stick it down into one of the holes. And we can see now when we touch this wire and this wire, they're connected. So everything in between here is connected. However, if I switch this down on this side to the bottom row, and now I touch these together, there's no beep because there's no continuity. So that's how you can test to see if certain points on your breadboard are connected to each other. Another quick note too, uh, I mentioned the different sizes. Uh, this actually can be made bigger or smaller. A lot of people don't necessarily know this, but these rails usually will break away. So this is just some sticky uh, double-sided tape on the back side and holding this together. You can see there's little notches in here. And what you can do is you can actually uh, connect multiple breadboards together. You can connect multiple power rails together. So I can take this one off and this one off and, and slide those together. I can take this whole thing and put it on a whole other row of uh, uh, breadboard connections. So you can really customize your layout uh, to what you need uh, as far as size is concerned. Take a look at figure 1-6 in my book. You'll see a schematic and a breadboard layout of 
a very, very simple circuit. It's almost the most basic, simplest circuit uh, you can make that actually does something, uh, at least something interactive. The interaction is only a switch, but um, still, uh, if you're new, completely new to electronics, uh, schematics may be a little daunting. So what we can do is take a look at the schematic and take a look at the breadboard layout here. Now I've tried to lay my breadboard out as close to the illustration of the breadboard in the book. The switch is a little, uh, the layout of the switch and the layout of this header is a tiny bit different. But what we can do is look at the schematic and also look at the breadboard at the same time. And in fact, that's why I included them on the same page in the book. So you could easily compare the two. So what's kind of going on with this? Well, with conventional current flow, current is coming out of the nine volt battery through the positive lead into this header, into the middle position of the switch. Uh, and then when we make the connection on this switch, current is going to flow through this red wire to be distributed along this bus like we talked about or power rail uh, then it travels through this wire into this row uh, looks like we have it on row 20 um, and then it gets routed to this resistor this resistor is a 470 ohm resistor it goes through this resistor into the positive or anode side of the led through the LED, down the cathode or negative side, over to this black wire on row 15, to this lower terminal, back over to this wire, which goes straight into the black lead of the nine volt battery. And our circuit will be complete when this switch is connected. We'll just go ahead and try it right now. We'll turn on the switch and you see the LED comes on. Now there is complete path uh, through all of our components in the correct way to light this LED. And when we turn the switch off, it will turn off. Now, as I point out in the book, this is not by any means the only way to connect this. In fact, I would say there is almost infinite <laughs> ways to, to connect this. Um, all we have to do is, is pull these wires and let's put the resistor going to the positive rail to, let's say that spot right there. Now, because that's coming from the positive side, we got to make sure and put the anode on that same row. So we'll put the anode on the same row, the cathode going to the negative terminal. So now we have no actual wires connecting our components. And now when we turn this on, it's still going to light up just as it did before. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to skip making a video for chapter two of my book because it'll be easier to explain the 555's pin functionalities in the subsequent chapter videos. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so now. Thanks for watching.